Let's try out this problem from a Harvard MIT Mass Tournament from back in 2010. Let f of n be the summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k to the nth power times k factorial. And we wish to calculate the summation from n equals to 2 to infinity of f of n which is summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k to the nth power times k factorial. So we have this double summation right here. And the first thing I see is that maybe we can try switching the summations. I think it's going to benefit us if we write this as a summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of a summation from n equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k to the nth times k factorial. Why is switching the summation beneficial? Well, realize that by switching the summation, we obtained a geometric series inside. This is a geometric series because for a constant value of k, we are going to have 1 over k squared times k factorial plus 1 over k cubed times k factorial plus 1 over k to the fourth times k factorial and so on as n ranges from 2 to infinity. And we see that this is a geometric series with the common ratio of 1 over k. And obviously, if we had not switched the summation, we are not going to have this infinite geometric series because in this case, our n is staying constant while k is varying from 2 to infinity. So we are not going to have the same situation. And the valid question you may ask is, are we allowed to switch the order of summation? because it's not allowed in every single case. And to answer the question, I'm going to write down a theorem from real analysis. And it can be proven that if summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of summation from n equals to 2 to infinity of absolute value of 1 over k to the nth power times k factorial converges, so if we can show that this entire thing converges, it can be proven that both of these summations are going to converge without the absolute value. And they are also going to have the same convergent value as well. So we can justify this equal sign once we show that this series converges. But realize, because our k is positive and our n is positive, and inside we have k to the nth power times k factorial, we are going to be always taking absolute value of a positive quantity. So really, this thing is equal to the double summation of 1 over k to the nth power times k factorial. We don't need the absolute value sign because this thing is positive anyway. So that's telling us that once we show that this entire thing converges to some value, then the series also converges to the same value as well. Knowing this, let's try to find the converging value for this particular double summation. So in this case, we have a summation from k equals to 2 to infinity. And inside, as mentioned, we have a geometric series with the first term 1 over k squared times k factorial over 1 minus the common ratio 1 over k. So let's try simplifying this. So we have a summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of, I'm going to multiply by k squared to top and bottom, just to simplify the fractions. And that's going to get us 1 over k factorial. There's 1 over k factorial times, when you multiply k squared to 1 over k squared, that's going to get us 1 over, when you multiply k squared to 1 minus 1 over k, that gets us k squared minus k. And how can we simplify this thing? The first thing that comes to my mind personally is that we know how to evaluate summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k squared minus k because this is a classic telescoping summation. That's summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k times k minus 1. And we know using partial fraction decomposition, or you can just think it out in your head in this case, we see that this is 1 over k minus 1 minus 1 over k, and this is a telescoping series. When k is 2, we get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2. When k is 3, we get 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3. When k is 4, we get 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4, and so on. So all the intermediate values are going to cancel out, and when we are going up to n, 
we are going to stop at 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n. So all of these values are going to cancel out. And as n approaches infinity, this 1 over n is going to go to 0 as well. So in the end, we are going to be left with 1. And I thought maybe we can use the same concept. Perhaps it's not going to be a direct telescoping series. It's not going to be as nice as this summation without k factorial. But who knows, maybe we can simplify something using this approach. So let's try it out. So let's write this as a summation from k equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times 1 over k squared minus k, which we know is 1 over k minus 1 minus 1 over k minus 1 over k. And let's try applying the same idea of this telescoping series. So let's write this entire summation as 1 over 2 factorial times 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial times 1 over 2. So I'm writing down what we get when k is 2. And when k is 3, we get plus 1 over 3 factorial times 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 factorial times 1 over 3. And we can go on. Let's do just one more. Plus 1 over 4 factorial times 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 factorial times 1 over 4. And we are going to go on and on and on. Now for the telescoping sum, the second term and the third term had the same value and they cancelled out. But in this case, they are obviously not the same. But who knows, maybe they are going to simplify when we add them up. So let's try it. So let's try evaluating this minus 1 over 2 factorial times 2 plus 1 over 3 factorial times 2. And we can have the common denominator of 3 factorial times 2. And to get the denominator of 3 factorial times 2, we have to multiply by 3 to top and bottom because 3 times 2 factorial is 3 factorial. So we get negative 3 plus 1. So I'm just adding these up and realize that we get negative 2 over 3 factorial times 2, which is negative 1 over 3 factorial. So this entire thing is negative 1 over 3 factorial. Now let's try out the fourth item and the fifth item on the list. Now what happens when we add them up? Using the same reasoning, we can make the common denominator 4 factorial times 3. So we are going to have to multiply by 4 to top and bottom. So negative 4 plus 1. And we see, once again, amazingly, that we get negative 3 over 4 factorial times 3. So we get negative 1 over 4 factorial. And it looks like this pattern is going to continue. So this entire summation is apparently 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial minus 1 over 4 factorial minus 1 over 5 factorial and so on. Let's take a second to prove this. So we want to show that negative 1 over n factorial times n, so in this case n is 4, plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n simplifies nicely in this way. And we see that by taking the common denominator to be n plus 1 factorial times n, we are going to get negative n plus 1 plus 1, and this is negative n. So n's are going to cancel out, getting us negative 1 over n plus 1 factorial, which is what we observed. Now we are basically done if you know the series definition of E, but you may have one more doubt that I want to address. You may ask, are we allowed to add up the series by adding them up like this? Because we are treating infinite summation in this case as associated. Well, it can be proven once again using real analysis that if a series is convergent, the associated property applies. So we are allowed to add up the intermediate values and sum them up if we wish. And it's a routine exercise to prove that the series converges. And you can use a ratio test to quickly prove this and I'll leave it up to you. Anyway, my main point is that because we can show that this series converges, we can apply the associated property of addition. Anyway, let's finish this up. We know E is equal to 1 plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial and so on. And the part that we want is negative of this part. And we see that by rearranging this, that this entire thing, I'll just call it X, is equal to E minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 half. 
or e minus 5 halves. So we know this entire thing is e minus 5 halves, and the part that we care about is negative of that. So we get 1 over 2, and this thing is negative of e minus 5 halves, or 5 halves minus e, adding them up gets us our final answer of 3 minus e. So let's go back up. So we know that this entire summation converges to the value of 3 minus e, and we are done.